normally I wear my pants to church, this sounds weird, but today I had to wear some shorts because these things are so blistering white that any smudge, any like fingerprint, anything shows immediately. This is like, there's nothing, they're, they're as pure as white as snow. Nothing can be hidden from these bad boys because they're so white. So I knew that knowing me, I'm always bleeding or something. I'm always cutting a finger or doing something weird with anything physical. I knew that I'd get some blood on these and I couldn't wear them to church. I'd have to wait and change later because you know the trailer and all that stuff. So I, I waited. If they weren't so white, it would be easier to hide the, the blemishes. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who, who, anybody else have white pants in here? It's a, it's a minority probably. One, one people? Two people? Three? It reminded me of, uh, if it's your first time here, my name is Pastor Jeff Gwaltney. This is One Seed Church, and we've been here since January, and we're, we're cruising, man, towards God's purpose. But the pants reminded me of when I was a kid. My mom, I don't know if anybody else had mothers like this that would wrap their furniture and everything to keep the furniture nice from getting a blemish on it. You see, we had like the plastic wrap. We had a period of time where it was bath towels because that looks better. Putting bath towels over all the nice furniture to keep the furniture nice, but you got bath towels when company comes over over the furniture. And they're probably white bath towels, which then the white towels, just like the pants, show the dirt anyway. But my mom, she was really neat and tidy, whitey tidies, you know, whitey tidy like my pants And when I was a kid. And so that's probably why it's instinctual that I thought I needed some white tight pants. Eventually, she got tired of covering the furniture though, and she just said, eh can't keep up with these stains. There's too many of them, too many kids running around. I tell them to take their shoes off. They don't ever listen. So eventually she just, like, you could actually sit on the cushion. It was awesome. It's this foreign thing to me by the time I was a teenager that I know I had to, no longer I had to sit on the towel and then retuck the towel when you get up because it's got the ripples and now it doesn't look good. I don't miss those days. But seriously, Everybody has a value they stand for. We have values, right? Family values, moral values. And the Bible has values and principles we live by. And so white pants just ties right into this. You're going to see in a minute. But if you had to pick a value that represented you, what value would you pick? You see, there is a value that represents the image of God that he designed you to be like. But the world is trying its hardest to change that image over time. Purity is a term we barely recognize anymore as a culture. From saving ourselves to marriage to being honest with our neighbors, we are being discolored by the impurities of the world in the form of sin. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, though, we've been awarded the opportunity to oxyclean our lives back to the innocent state we were created and designed to live by. White pants. There's a value behind the white pants. There's a value behind this color white in the scripture. If we go to Revelation chapter 3 verse 1 through 6, it's not, 1 through 6, it's not a book I typically speak from. It's a book I don't usually touch because it's for later and I'm worried about right now and it's also extra confusing and, and depressing to me. I don't like to read it, but I picked it for today's message. Aren't you guys full of joy because of that? Come on now. Come on now. You guys with me? Come on, we got to clap. If you're with me, just go like this. Just, just tap your shoulder. Okay, just checking you're there. <laughs> we go to verse 1. This is the church of Sardis. Not sardine, sardis. And let me tell you that Jesus Christ is about to give them one of the biggest dis is they've ever had in sardis. The scripture refers to them as the dead church. How many wants to be the dead church? Come on here at One Seat Church. Come on, check it out. We want to be the dead church. No, man. We want to be the church full of life. So when Jesus himself is calling you the dead church, ooh, that's, that's a problem. That's something to listen in on. 
But the letter is written to the Sardis church as a wake-up call. Christ is trying to warn them in the end that, hey guys, you need a change here, or there's going to be a problem. In verse 1 it says, And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These things say he, Christ, who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are actually dead. Even though they're physically got a heartbeat. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent from your sins if you haven't. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know the hour which I will come upon you. Verse 4, but you have a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The title of my sermon today is The Forgotten Value. The Forgotten Value. What's a value? It's a principle. It's a code. It's a hexadecimal value, possibly. Some of you might have seen the, the pre-roll. I was showing uh, over the weekend a, a video of this weekend, and it was just a, a value. It was a hashtag value. I'll get to that in a minute. You see, God's promise is pure. It's not about this color. It's what the color represents in the scripture. It's pure. Pure is a word that's far from our culture. It's almost a bad word. I don't even hear churches talking about it no more. I thought, I'm going to talk about that. Well, go me. I never even heard that preached on my life. And I know right and wrong, but I never hear anybody tell me about pureness. And I'm not just talking about sex. I'm talking about life. We're designed to be pure in everything, in our, in our relationships, in our, 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 our honesty with our neighbor, in how we do business, and how we do life, and how we treat people. It's a blueprint for our life. Culture has shrunk it down to certain categories and thrown that out the window as well. But as the church, we are to be different than the world. We are to not blend in with the world. And if you don't know what purity looks like, and you don't know what the scripture looks like, you're not going to recognize it. But God's promise is pure, and you won't notice what you don't see. There's that value. We go back to that hashtag. What is that, man? It's some letters. It's hashtag FFF. FFF, or if it was Nick reading it, he'd say, hashtag f <laughs> I always pick on Nick, he's related. Well, I'm a programmer, and in the programming world, I know preaching, programming, it's weird, I agree, it's just the way it worked out for me. In the programming world, that's not some letters, that represents white, the color White. You see, in a computer, in a website, on Facebook, when you see the color white, if you look at the HTML behind it, it's going to render that. That's how the browser knows, okay, if I see six digits in their FFF, FFF, display white. Create the red, green, blue value combination of white, RGB. You know, everybody knows RGB and hexadecimal values. But I've been doing it so long that now when I see hashtag white, that's just what pops in my head. I don't see letters, I see white. But it's because I, I recognize it, you see? But you wouldn't recognize it if you didn't know. And what you don't know, you won't see. And as we're bred into the culture of sin, truthfully, we're trained to not know. That way, we don't even question what it is anyway. It's just some letters to some. But some remember, it's not just 
a thing of the past. It's God's principle, and God's word never expires. I say that a lot because we tend to think God's word expires, at least when we want it to. Then we reactivate God's word on Monday. We're partial. But you won't notice what you don't see. Just like that code, it's not going to make sense to you because you've never seen it for what it really is. It's white. It's purity. And if you don't know what purity looks like, you're never going to think, is this impure? The way I'm living. The color white in Revelation represents purity in the scripture. Pureness. And culture has trained us to ignore what was designed to be pure. Everything, everything you look at, even the cartoons, man. I was trying to watch the Goonies last night with Colton. He likes, hey, you guys, the sloth, B baby Ruth, you know that guy? Anybody know sloth, Goonies? Zoe, you know Goonies? Come on now, Goonies? 80s, 80s babies in the house know Goonies. See, Goonies was an awesome movie, but I didn't remember all the cuss words that I evidently watched all the time when I was a kid until last night I showed it to my five-year-old, and it was, it was bleep, 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 bleep. It's a cuss word left and right, and I almost had to turn the thing off because I'm like, my mother let me watch this? I felt like kind of a hypocrite, to be honest, because I used to watch that. We used to pretend to be Mikey. Me and my neighbor friend, we'd fight over who was going to be Mikey. And we both had a, had a crush on the, the teenage girl, the older girl. Um, what's her name? I don't even know. But she was hot when we were 10. And what is it? Anybody know their name? The, you know, the girl, the cute girl. Anyway, it had a lot of bad language. And he didn't know that... Then and, bleep, and all those meant something bad, so he was just ruling them out. But I'm sitting here cringing every time, thinking now it's in his psyche, and maybe he's gonna he's he's good at repeating things. So maybe tomorrow he's gonna curse me out and not even know it because he doesn't even know what it means because he's never seen it. He doesn't know what it looks like. Like hashtag, he doesn't know. But it still means something. We start inheriting the impure traits of the world. Because they've been consumed by us, and we're not even recognizing it. And Hollywood is a big one, man. They sell it all. They sell it all, and they glamour, glamorify. I don't know if that's a good word or not. I was bad in English. But they, they make it glamorous, and uh, we start thinking it's cool to mirror. To, you know, that's why we like the duck face. That's why we like to you know, do all that. It's because it's, cause it's cool, right? But we're selling something, and we don't know that maybe we're selling hashtag, and we don't even know it because we're being trained to adopt the world. That's why we got to look at the word. Go to church. Amen. Preach it, sister. We have to recognize that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But if we are not recognize it to begin with, we won't know we've fallen short. How do we know unless we see there's a difference? Each stain we make... Each stain we make, make it less noticeable to recognize the previous stain. If these were black jeans or blue jeans, and I have some stains, some blood stains, you're not going to recognize them, right? They're going to blend in. But you put a, put a few stains on these, it's going to be real noticeable. It's like, it's like having babies. I don't know if anybody you have kids. We've got four kids, and when the baby first comes along, they are blemish-free. We know steel. Steel is not blemish-free. That's why they named him Steel, because the kid is a tank, and he's made of steel, and he's, he, can dirt, he's, he can endure the blows like no one's business, man. This kid crashed face first into my shin bone a few weeks ago and just got up and walked it off. Are you okay, little boy? It's like Colton, my second son. He was a baby. He started bashing his head on the floor. After a few bruises, we quit recognizing that there was any bruises on him because the kid's shins and everything's always bruised up. It just it starts blending in. But when he was pure and the Tasmanian devil had not infiltrated his heart, there was no blemish on him. And one little owie, oh, son, are you okay? Let's get him. Let's treat him like a baby. Now he falls. If it's not broke or there's no blood, it's just like, you're fine. Get up. Go play. It starts blending in. You meet, you meet Taz sometime, and you'll, you'll get my humor. It's a little strange, but it'll be funnier when you know Colton, my son. But God's promise is pure. It's not supposed to be all dinged up and bruised up. He doesn't want you to live all bruised up and stained up. He wants you to be 
pure. And as time passes, we become complacent in our stains. And we don't even recognize they exist anymore. And some of us even denial that there's anything wrong with having them. We just say, it's just the way it is. It's life. We got stains. Everybody else does it. We train our minds that we never do anything wrong, and then we wonder why God can never fix our problems. It's because we're telling God there's nothing wrong, but we're hurting and broken deep down, and we're forgetting because we've trained our mind to just say, it's just hashtag, f we've forgotten, we've detrained. We're blind to correction after a while, after these turn yellow, if you want to get a little more geeky with me, if I change those last two digits to the letter E, hashtag FFFFEE, -E, it'll be a nice semitone yellow. Yeah, I know it's nerdy, but that's what I see. I see light yellow. And that's, that's what happens. It starts changing to yellow instead of white. And then we get to where we say, you know, the yellow's okay. It's, I still go to church, man. It's cool. It's okay. I'll just be yellow. I don't need to be pure as God has designed me to, I can just be like 80% white and the two last two digits on my hexadecimal value can make me a little shade of yellow. I'll just have a few stains. But we slowly numb ourselves and become blind to correction. We become blind that we're becoming more imperfect with the sins of the world. And we just start saying, I didn't even know that was sin because I never looked into it. That's what they did, so I followed them. But as Christians, and as knowledge of people who have some word in them, we are to recognize by receiving this word when the word conflicts with the world. That's when we say, wait a second, I don't want to be Sardis or Sardine. We'll call them the Sardinians. That's a lot easier to remember. We don't want to be a Sardine in Sardineville, the dead church. The dead life. We take church out of it. It could just be your life. You could, you could not have anything to do with Jesus, and that would be a sad thing because there is an eternal consequence, but your life could be dead overall because you're living with these stains that God still designed you to be pure. Even if you don't serve God, he still designed you to be pure also. He still loves you also. It's not just for church folk, church people. Man, I'm spitting a lot today. Sorry about that. It's like I keep seeing it fling off my that's great. That's great for the camera and the people watching at home. The live stream. You can't see the spit flying, but I can with these lights. It's great. We start blending in. That's what happens. We start blending into the culture. We start seeing no separation between us and the ways of the world. And when that happens, it becomes dangerous because we start walking towards Sardineville. Sardis. It's easier, so much easier, to just blend in with the stains of the world than to try to avoid getting a stain on these white pants. I mean, I can't even bend over, let alone if I bend over, they're going to rip. I'm going to get a stain. It's just too much work. I'm just going to wear some shorts to church this morning because it's too much work to keep the stains off. It's much easier just to have some stains, wear some shorts, do whatever I want to do. No one will notice that way because they'll see all the, shins, the bruises on my shins and everything, and they won't notice anymore. I'll just blend in. Why save myself for marriage when, when all my friends don't? Well, maybe you're supposed to show them another way. Maybe they wouldn't if you didn't. Maybe God is showing you a way to lead others. Maybe God wants to work through you, and it's not really about you, and you don't even know that because you're thinking about your problems and how hard it is to keep a stain off your pants. But if you keep those stains off your pants for a few weeks, you might bring 20 people to the Lord and not even know it. They would spend eternal glory in heaven because of what you did. Maybe we don't think like that. We just think about, man, it's inconvenient. I'm going to wear shorts to church. I do it. I'm talking to myself. That's why I don't wear white pants. It's too hard to be pure. This morning, man, I was on the computer. Thoughts enter my head, but I just don't let them out of my mouth. I got, whew, I was getting mad on the computer because we we're having some technical issues, and I got a little bit of Italian blood in me, and it kind of sets a fire sometimes, and it comes out. It's just, it's just, it's, everybody knows me. It's cool. It's, it's, our family's loud. There's a Sicilian blood or whatever. And, and this morning, you know, it was getting to me, and I had to say, slow down, Tiger. The Lord is in this place. I don't need to go there. I just take a deep breath, and 
it is all good. I don't need to act it out. I might be confronted with it. I might be confronted with the opportunity to go stain my pants, but I'm going to stop and think for a minute. Do I really want to do that? Do I really care what they think over what God thinks? They want to go where? Yeah, I know if I just go along, I'm just kind of getting towards the, I'm getting next to it. I'm not in it. I'm not dabbling in it. One of these days, I'm going to do my candle analogy. The fire analogy, you get, it's like sin. You, this is what I used to do with sin. It'd be like a roaring fire, right? And I'll just get close enough that it's warm. But I'm not touching the fire. And if you get close enough, what does a, what does a consuming fire do? It reaches out for oxygen and it sucks you in. That's why there's a line you got to draw with your life. And you say, you know what, if I go cross this line, I'm, you know, 90% more likely to cross this line. So you have to stay clear of those things because once you get in the heat of it, it's going to suck you in. And you're going to get some stains. And you're going to go, man, I wish, I wish I could do that again. I wish I could get the stain out. We start building impurities in our daily life. It's getting dirty slowly and not even recognizing it. We got this awesome fireplace at our house. It's gas. And every morning, I, I get like back spasms from, I don't know, church set up or something. I'm working out, old age, I don't know. And every morning, I turn it on before I go up to my office to work. And I sit there, and the heat warms my back. And we've had it forever. And then, like, my brother will come over. He'll go, man, that's dirty looking. And I go, what do you mean? And I didn't even notice that the glass, it's gas, you know, and there's a glass thing, and, and uh, there's spots all over it, and I've just gotten used to how it looked. And so a few, few weeks ago, I was, the fireplace quit working. I noticed real quick when it quit working, because, man, it's cold in the morning in our house, and I got that back pain, and I want, I want that good feeling of the, of the heat. And so we had to call, you know, C. Bennett, and they come out, and they clean the thing, and not only did they fix it, but they cleaned it. And there's this tray of embers in the bottom that just glow, and it's this beautiful tray of fire embers, and I've never noticed them in six years being there. It's because the thing was so dirty and stanky, I didn't even know that it was so full of impurities. I was clouding the window and didn't even know what I had paid for was supposed to be there. It was like a, wow, it's like getting a cherry at the bottom of the shake. You know, you're like, whoa, I didn't know that was there. Bonus. I didn't recognize it because it had just slowly, slowly changed. Slow enough that I didn't see the changes as they were happening. You guys with me? God's promise is pure, and it's always, always going to be easier to compromise the promise of God and hope for the best than to uphold the promise. It's always going to be easier to go with the masses than to lead the minority down the narrow path. You know what I'm saying? To the Lord, the heaven, the free, it's an open freeway to the, you know, where the bad place, and it's a narrow gate to the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says. So it, it does matter. It's, it's not really just about these white pants, even though I'm starting to not like them because they're making my legs chafe. Is that a word, chafe? My calf hair is starting to chafe, chafe off my leg because the pants are so tight. Is it, it, I've never had that experience before. This is a first. This is great. My wife would be proud of me that I'm growing in my fashion knowledge. I'm not strong enough in my faith to handle temptation, so I'll just stay away from the Bible, I'll just stay away from the knowledge to know, because as long as I can be ignorant and not recognize, I don't have to worry about it. I'm okay. But you're not. We teach ourselves there's no more right and wrong, and if you tell me that these pains, pants should be white and I think they should be stained, then I'm going to tell you you're a hater anyway. You're hating on me because you care about me and you want my pants to be white, Vincent, but you care about me and I don't like that because then it makes me feel like I got a little bit of accountability and I don't want you telling me how, how pure my pants should be in my life, Vincent, so you hate on me now. But maybe it's because you love me that you're telling me. The people who tell you the truth, they're the ones who care about you in your life. The ones who flatter you and get you down the path they want to go, they're just taking advantage, and they won't last. They'll go out as quick as they came in. Build pillars in your life. It's easy. I, some of you guys are in college and high school, and 
this is kind of a slow week, but we've got a lot of kids in college that come to church here, and it's really cool, and I just, it makes me think back to those days, and that, that college, high school, high school college window is probably the most difficult transition in life because you have to uphold God's promise in a world that wants you to just throw it out the window at the most, un, you know, the most inconvenient time. Once you get married, it's a lot easier because now you're in God's covenant. So I think about that, and I encourage anybody that age who's single, who's still trying to figure it out, that you don't have to do it 80%. If you do it 100% God's way, he will reconcile back blessings you didn't even plan for. Your life will be so much better than you planned for. And when you compromise and take the shortcut, just like Abram and Sarah trying to get pregnant, when God said, I'll bless Sarah, and he went and got his maidservant pregnant, it didn't work out so well. You know, the Ishmaelites, they became... The enemy to Isaac, they split, they fought. It matters. Do it God's way under the sanctification of the Lord, and you will find glory. Do it your way, and you'll be left with brokenness, sadness. Some of you need to do the laundry. But if I remember right, my mom said, you know, white fabric, it's the hardest to get the stains out. We can try to wash it, but it just doesn't come clean. You're pretty good with spots. I mean, is it hard to get stains out of white, Michelle? It is. It's harder because it's so pure. But some of you need to do the laundry. When I lived in Nashville, I had to go to the laundromat. Anybody ever used the laundromat, you know, where you got to put the quarters in? It's fun, isn't it? Taking all your stuff to a laundromat and sitting there for whatever two hours while your thing's spinning, and then maybe you go somewhere and you come back, and you got to have the quarters, and if you don't have the quarters, or I don't know, maybe it's dollar coins, I don't even know. It was a long time ago. You had to pay. You had to pay to get your stains out. But this kind of stain I'm talking about, somebody else already paid to get your stain out. Jesus took the pain for you to get the stain out. He washed the stain clean with the blood. There's only one kind of chemical that can get the stain out. It's the blood. The blood. Touch your neighbor, tell them the blood. It needs the blood. The blood. Come on. Come on. The blood. We need the blood, Nick. I can't get this out with some spot shot. Even though my mom's really good with spot shot, she's not getting the stain out of this pureness without the blood. And Jesus says, I'll give you the blood, but you got to repent and come to me. I died on the cross. You don't have to put those quarters in the laundromat. My laundromat's free. I actually already paid as much as you need if you just bring me your fabric. I will clean it. Good as new. Forget cleaning it. I'll give you a new fabric. I'll give you some new whitey tidies, Jeff. I'll make you new, he told Nicodemus. How do we need to go on again? We become new. He didn't say, I'll make you better. He says, I'll make you new. We become a new creation in Christ when we be filled with the Spirit of the Lord as we become one with Jesus and we get rid of all those stains. We need to do the laundry. God wants and will remove your stains from your life's garments, but it takes a blood washing. Only the blood of the lamb can get this kind of stain out. You'll never be able to get them clean without his help because God's promise is pure. And the only thing that can, can cleanse what God has made pure is the blood of the lamb. That is the only thing that can rectify the impurities of this world. Nothing else will do. You don't have to be perfect, but Jesus wants to live perfectly in you and through you. He's offered us a get out of jail free card. Some of you got, got a lot of stains and you're starting to say, yeah, it's too far gone. I can't get these clean. But you need to do the laundry with the blood of Christ. He'll get the stains out. He'll give you a new garment. If you have air to breathe, then receive this word before tomorrow comes and you're tempted to do that again if it's that thing. And maybe you haven't got there yet. Let this be a strengthening to your armor that you don't have to be a semitone yellow. You can be pure. Hashtag. You can stay pure. 
You don't have to be like me and all my friends and everybody my age and do those things. I tell my children, God, please let my children not do the same stupid things I did. Lord, I know, I know I'm human, but I'm not going to just say my kids can just go down that road too because they can do better. Each generation, we try to give them better. And I want them to stay clean, baby. I want to give them the word early. I want them to pray more than I did. I want them to be more sincere than me. I looked at church like clip-on ties and Superman underneath and Hot Wheel cars playing under the pews. I didn't think about the Lord at eight years old like my daughter who came out and sang, and it just touches me because she has a passion for God. I didn't know what passion was. She has a chance to do it better. I'm not going to just say, well, that's how I was, so I'm going to let her be that way too. No, if I think the Goonies is too... Goonie for my kids, I'm going to have to take it. And I'm sorry that no one took it from me, but that's what I think will make them better. It's okay to make corrections. We don't have to keep repeating the process. And if you stumble and you've fallen, it's never too late to get up. It's when you quit trying to get up, when your life goes down the tubes and you become Sardis or the sardines in Sardinesville. You become dead. And then you just go off the deep end. Why bother? Now I'm so consumed. There's no point in trying to get these clean again. But if, as long as you keep trying, God will never forsake you or leave you. He will give you another chance to oxyclean your life back to the pure state he wants it to be and will continue to give it to you. But you have to seek him. It doesn't matter if you've already been saved or you haven't been saved. It doesn't matter if you're in church or you're out of church. People in church fall all the time. And there's people in church that don't, they don't live like they look. Oh, snap. Yes. So this is for you too. This is for me. This is for everybody. Reverse the stains and they will be forever forgotten. My mom, she's the queen of spot shot. And my wife, she's, she's a strong uh, contender for the queenship. But right now, she's still the princess because my mom's pretty good with the spot shot. And man, when she, when she does a good cleaning job on, I have to call her and say, can you get this stain out of my carpet? And now my wife can do it. But man, if it's a really good cleaning job, that stuff stinks. It's nasty. It's potent. I feel like I'm going to die smelling it. I don't want to smell it. It doesn't smell good. It doesn't feel good. But it takes something potent to get it out. And it's like the blood. It takes something potent to get it out. And that's why it matters. And that's why it doesn't feel good sometimes. Because you want to hold on and fight it. And there's a battle. And God says, if you just give it to me and let me have it, you can drop the weight. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. I had to go to the pits sometimes before I'd reach out for help. But I don't want my kids to go doing the same. They don't have to do it that way just because God couldn't get my attention. God wants to give you a new garment, even if it's a little smudge. He wants you to be pure. God's promise is pure. He don't want you to live tarnished. Give it to God. Get a new garment. If you all could stand to your feet with me, we're going to close. If you're standing at the coffee pot at work tomorrow and they say, what was Pastor Jeff's message about? You can remember one thing and say, God's promise is pure. God's promise is pure. One more time, say it with me. God's promise is pure. Some of you feel your stains are too deep to bring them before the Lord. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. But neither is me or anybody else. We're not. But that's why there's grace. God gave us a way out through grace. The grace means we couldn't earn the opportunity to be cleansed. But he did it anyway and said, I'm going to give it to you anyway because I love you so much because of my grace and my mercy on my people. And I love you that much. That's what grace is. Some of you came in and didn't even know you had any stains. You thought you were good. And then the light shines. Points it out. Like a black light. A black light is brutally honest, isn't it? Come on, you know what I'm saying. Everybody knows what a black light does. We've watched a few TV shows. It's not a fun topic, but hey, it's honest. And that's what the light of God will do. It will shine it on your life and say, am I really being honest with myself or am I playing God? You can't play the Lord. I played everybody else, but I can't play God. It's you and God in the end. It's not them. 
You can play your mom and dad. You can play your cousins. You can play your friends. You can play your family, but you can't play God. He's sitting there watching all the time. And until you step out in the light and you look at it and you acknowledge that he knows, you can't take a step forward until you recognize the value is still there. Jesus wants to bring you back to the flock. He wants to keep you in the flock. He wants to remove the impurities from your past and make you new. If you got some stains, he wants to take you back to a nice hexadecimal value for your life. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, thank you for letting us have the opportunity to talk about this and your pureness. It's something we don't really hear in church anymore because it's becoming a thing of the past. But God, we don't want to let the word go, which never expires. We want to keep it alive while we can until you come back for us because the truth is what's setting us free. And if we let the word go, we are dead like in Sardis this planted in our heart as we make decisions through our week. Tomorrow when I get to work and I'm just a little tired because I haven't enough coffee and I decide I want to curse that person out, remind me that your promise is pure and I don't need to do it. Stop me, Lord. Give me a reminder. Let me stop myself by your spirit on me, God. Give me a way out and I will follow. This Friday when the party comes and it's time to go do the thing and everybody else is doing it and yeah, yeah and the, the drinks are flowing and everybody else is doing that stuff and drinking and everything. Let me say, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go do something else. I don't need to be with them because I love them and I'm going to show them I can have fun without drinking that alcohol and without doing that, doing that stuff and regretting it tomorrow. I don't need to do that because I want your pureness, Lord. Because I know when I stay pure and true to you, you will deliver the best for me. And that's what's going to bring me the most joy in my life as I grow old in my walk with you. Touch us this week. As I've been praying, help us watch out for street lights so we don't have any accidents on the road. And we're thankful for your hand of protection. And everybody say, in Jesus' name, amen.